to the pioneers of Kansas who in devotion to human freedom came into a wilderness, suffered hardships and faced dangers and death to found this state in righteousness. Well, for these people to have their freedom, we gave up our freedom. My name is James Pepper Henry, and I am vice chairman of the Kaw Nation. The stone behind me in our Ka language, it's called Injuje Wahobe, which means red sacred rock. And this is a stone that is very important to the Ka people and has been for centuries. My name is Sarah Gregg. I am a, an environmental historian. This, this rock uh, behind me is a, uh, it's called a glacial erratic. It's red quartzite from uh, the reach, northern reaches of South Dakota that was brought down during uh, one of the most recent glaciations. It was deposited in the area surrounding Topeka, along with a number of other much smaller boulders. Uh, so this particular rock uh, is known to have been resting either in the Kansas River or along the banks of the Kansas River by Shungananga Creek uh, in what is now Tecumseh. And this was an important gathering place for our people and probably for other Native communities as well. But over the centuries, we had many ceremonies uh, at the site of this stone. It was a, definitely a geographic marker for our people to gather, but over the centuries it became almost like a church for us, a place where we would come and have our ceremonies and worship. And in our, uh, in our beliefs along the riverways here in Kansas, including along the Kaw River and Shunkanunga Creek, when our, our people pass away, they go to spirit villages and along those waterways, there are uh, several spirit village, villages that are located there. And this stone was a marker to where our sp spirit villages are located at. And so uh, this rock has been very, very important to us uh, for a long, long time. My name is Kent Blansett. I come from uh, five nations, so Cherokee Creek, Choctaw, Shawnee, and Potawatomi descendant. Um, I am currently serving as the Langston Hughes Associate Professor uh, of history here at the University of Kansas. The rock typically has uh, a special meaning for, for Native peoples in general. Uh, generally speaking, you know, rocks predate us by millions of years. They were here at the time of creation. Um, they usher us back into that time in which we were breathed into this world. And this rock is placed in a ceremonial center for the Ka Nation and Ka peoples. Um, and because of that, it served them for centuries as one of those ancestors that has helped to carry their prayers um, and for their prayers to also be heard. And, and through this, uh, that relative deserves protection, uh, just like we would protect the remains of our ancestors. We've been gone from the stone for quite a while. We were actually uh, re removed from this area uh, before the stone was removed from its location to Robinson Park. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, we were forcibly removed from the state that bears our name, from Kansas, to Indian Territory in 1873. The rock was removed from its original location in 1929. The idea that the city of Lawrence would take this stone, rename it um, after pioneers, um, at least disrupting any connection the stone had um, with the Kaw people. Um, and then not only that, moving it into the heart of the city and claiming it as kind of a trophy uh, for this kind of pioneer mentality or this winning of the West, um, it really uh, smacks in the face of not understanding the true history of, of Lawrence, the true history of Kansas, the true history of, of the Kaw Nation, a, a state that bears the same name of the Kaw people. I think most people, most citizens of the state of Kansas do not even know where the name Kansas comes from. Kansas is the name of our people, the Kaw people. Kaw is, is an abbreviation for Kanza or, or Kanza, and the state of Kansas is named after our people. And uh, we have been essentially erased from the history and from the memory of what is now the state of Kansas. And, uh, we've been removed from our traditional homelands. This, this area, Topeka and Lawrence and Kansas City area, this, this is our traditional homeland. And uh, we were 
pushed further south and, and further west, eventually ended up in Council Grove, Kansas, until we were removed uh, from Kansas to the state of Oklahoma. At one point in time, when the, when the first Europeans arrived in this area, our numbers were over 20,000 people. By the turn of the century, because, mostly because of disease, uh, smallpox, cholera, diphtheria, and also starvation, uh, our numbers went from 20,000 people to just 198 people. I am a descendant of those uh, 198 people that survived all of these policies uh, and, and relocations. And uh, so we've been essentially erased. We were almost wiped out uh, from the face of the earth. And I, it's important to us that we have a presence again here in the state of Kansas, that people acknowledge who we are as a people the land that people live on here, our ancestors are buried here. The memories of our people are here on this land. Placing the plaque on this stone was a desecration of something that was very sacred to us. And it was a way, again, to erase the fact that there were indigenous peoples on this land. By appropriating the stone and then placing a plaque dedicating it to the, to the, to the pioneers here, was another way to erase the memory of our people. I think there was a certain amount of guilt uh, uh, under the surface with the people that moved in this area. They, they would have known that we would have been displaced so that they could take the land. And I think it was just another way to erase uh, the fact that we were here for centuries. And of course, this was a desecration of something that was very sacred to us. It would be like another culture coming in and taking over a church and dedicating it to their culture. It's really important that we begin to understand indigenous concepts of belief structures um, in regards to um, uh, our living world. You can't separate physical and spiritual, and um, this concept is a really strong concept um, as practiced by many indigenous communities around the world, especially here in, in Native North America. My name is Courtney Shipley. I'm the Vice Mayor of Lawrence, Kansas. The county owns the land, but the city runs the park. I think when people would talk about it, they would not be able to see a way around that for many, many years. And um, I was not having that. So, um, I mean, we drive, it's literally right next to us. We drive past it two or three times a day. My thought was, well, we could just convince the county to give us the park and then there won't be a discussion anymore about who owns the park and who has the rock and all of that. Then if the park is ours, then we can do what we need to do. Um, and then uh, kind of once I got in, there was some, you know, kind of background chitter chatter about that. Bradley O. Finkeldy, I'm the mayor of the Sea of Lawrence. Officially, the Kaw Nation reached out to us as a sovereign nation via, via a letter from them. This would have been the first time we had heard from anyone from the Kaw Nation um, about the rock or any other topic, really. Uh, then we got the letter, and there was, always, there was already, I felt, from discussing it with um, county commissioners, a wide agreement that we would be able to work something out. It was inappropriately taken, stolen, and um, the very least we can do is uh, help them get it back. We've received no um, objection. I've received no objection. Indeed, we've received a lot of positive outpouring, including letters from you know school children, um, emails, positive comments on the street. Um, everyone believes that we should return the rock to the Khan Nation. We're very appreciative of the city of Lawrence to acknowledge that and to recognize our claim to the stone is something that belongs to us or we belong to it and it's it, how important it is to the Kaw people and uh, just recently uh, the city did uh, pass a resolution to acknowledge our claim but they did something uh, 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 far beyond that claim the city actually uh, included an apology in their resolution, which is not something that we asked for, but it's something that we're very grateful and we're very appreciative for uh, having that apology. To see the Kaw Nation, you know, approach this, you know, and become successful and in, in, in being able to reach the hearts and uh, leaders of this community of Lawrence, um, it's inspiring as another indigenous person. Um, it's, it's another success. It's, it's another, uh, at least, 
uh, champion for indigenous rights. Um, that hopefully, you know, you never know who that's going to impact. We, when we were removed in, uh, from Kansas in 1873, uh, we no longer had any lands associated with our tribe. And back in the 1990s, uh, when I worked for the Kaw Nation, I helped negotiate the purchase of some land in Council Groves, and that's the first time the tribe had land uh, under its control in Kansas since, since our removal. And that's the only land that we have in Kansas right now that belongs to the tribe. Our plan at this moment is to move the rock to our tribal lands in Council Grove, Kansas. The Kaw Nation has a heritage park called Alagawahu Memorial Heritage Park. And that's an interpretive park to educate the broader public about the Kaw people. And uh, uh, we're very interested in moving the stone from Robinson Park here in Lawrence, Kansas to our tribal park in Council Grove, Kansas, where we can care for it more properly because it's something that, that, we can, that we're managing that's under our, our control and we can manage that land and we can take care of Injuje Wohobe. Uh, so um, that's the reasoning uh, behind moving the stone to Alagawahu Park is because it's on our tribal land. The giving back, the repatriation of the stone is the return of an ancestor that is going to require condolence. Much like we're in a state right now with our history of, of, of condolence, a reckoning, if you will, um, in understanding who we are as a people and that who we are as a people is not always a pretty picture. It's messy. Um, it, it, it's filled with violence. It's filled with destruction, but it's also filled with uplift. It's filled with overcoming insurmountable odds. It's a mixed history. The, the danger for, for xenophobia, the danger for hate, the danger for, for racist is the idea that we actually come together as a community, is the idea that we actually form uh, at least a relationship among each other. Having the stone formally uh, acknowledged as belonging to the Ka people, I hope that's the beginning of, of more things to happen in the future, not only for the Ka Nation, but for other tribes around the country that people will, be, will begin to acknowledge our sacred sites and our lands and our sacred places, uh, that we have a connection to those places. Uh, and I hope that this is the beginning that at, at some point in time in the future, in my lifetime, that we, we will be able to return to Kansas as, as the indigenous peoples of Kansas and reclaim some of our, our territory, some of our lands, and be part of the fabric of Kansas once again.